Hello there, my name is Dr. Amber Schmidtke and today I'm going to be talking to you about improving science communication and taking advantage of this chance we have um, during the COVID-19 pandemic to do that. So many of these things I'm gonna talk about today are directed towards folks that are in the scientific or medical communities. However, um, we all have a role to play in this, even as lay people. And so there is there are things that you need to be doing too. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started. So um, I don't know, much like many of us, I have gone all in on the uh, Hamilton stuff lately, being sheltered in place at home. And so uh, there are some little nerdy things here and there that kind of pay a nod to that. Um, but we'll start by talking about how history has its eyes on us right now. And, um, and all of us, uh, whether we're lay people or scientists, these are historic generation def defining times. Uh, we haven't seen a pandemic like this in 100 years. Um, and we should be glad for that. It's a sign of our improved sanitation, our improved public health. Um, and the advances of science that have helped us to live healthier, more productive lives. Um, and despite our advances in technology over those 100 years, in many ways, we are still relegated to the same tools that were in use 100 years ago to combat the 1918 pandemic, like social distancing, bans on public gatherings. Um, and that can be frustrating for the public to understand. So um, we're going to talk a lot about how to talk to the public. Uh, in recent years, we've seen ways in which science and expertise have been devalued in uh, the media, pop popular culture, or even politics. Um, and there's this notion right now that all opinions are equal, even if many of them are wrong, um, and they deserve equal airtime. And that's not, in science, that's just not true. <laughs> so um, that's, that's a thing that we're up against as well. But we have a segment of the population that struggles with critical thinking um, and understanding data, or they find data that justify their conclusions and ignore the rest of the scientific body of evidence. So these are all the things that um, kind of set us up poorly for this pandemic when it arrived. Um, and so not only does history have its eyes on us, but the public has its eyes on us as well. For many, I, I mean, th this is the first time they've really had to think about graphs and charts and data in this way since high school or college. They may be really great at their respective fields, um, and we need those people in our world. Um, but this is our time to provide information based on what we know um, to help them to make better decisions. Um, normally, the scientific spot or the scientific method is something that doesn't happen in the spotlight. It's something that is kind of quiet and, and not because it's wrong or shady, but because nobody usually has an interest. Um, and so what the public perceives as missteps, which are, you know, when, you know, one science scientific article contradicts another, that's some of the beautiful stuff that happens in science. That is the collaborative and self-correcting process that we go through in science to get to the answers. And so so um, it's a, a neat opportunity for us right now to bring people alongside us in the scientific method so that they better understand what we're doing and why that what they perceive to be infighting is normal and healthy in science. Um, we've seen people have to use these data to make decisions. We've seen, uh, you know, the Department of Public Health website have to change and morph over time to adjust to public demand. We've also seen people learn um, from those resources. You know, uh, it, graphing infectious disease is not the same as graphing that we learned in high school and college. Um, what looked like a drop off in the most recent time, we've since taught our communities that's a 14 day window of uncertainty, which is more of an artifact of the fact that we never know who's sick in real time. And so we've seen our public become more savvy over time with this information. And so we need to trust that they can do it, but give them the tools they need to be better consumers of data. So let's not throw away our shot on this, guys, because here's the thing. If we can improve scientific literacy during COVID-19, it's our chance to impact not just um, the public conversation over COVID-19, but also in other pressing areas of scientific and medical concern. And it could range from everything from health equity to climate change to the next pandemic, um, people taking their vaccinations, um, water and air quality, all of that. Um, so this has far reaching possibilities here. And so we need to take advantage of this unique time in history and our unique place within it. 
So let's not, let's work nonstop and let's write our way out from Hamilton. Um, so first we got to know our audience, right? We live in a society that is based on immediate gratification. Um, you know, you can order your groceries and have them delivered to your house within an hour. Um, in that sense, people don't like slow answers. Um, but just because an answer is slow doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. Um, unfortunately though, because people are impatient, they will listen to whoever can give them the shortest way out. Um, and that is how we have seen some of these conspiracy theories pop up. Um, we've also got um, a society that is not as community oriented as it has been in the past when we've had problems like the 1918 pandemic or the polio pandemic. Um, and so we have to, to be aware that you know our efforts at social distancing and sheltering in place um that's part of the reason why they weren't successful is because we didn't get community buy-in because that's just not how our society functions right now um our public has a limited awareness of the scientific method peer review and how scientists communicate we don't communicate our findings via twitter or via youtube we go through peer-reviewed journals um, and so in that sense, conspiracy theories will always have a leg up on us because they are fast, whereas our controlled studies and peer review are not. And so it may feel daunting at times that, you know, it feels like we've got the answers, we just need to get them out to the public, but our process is a lot slower. But what I will say in my experience as a science communicator since the start of this pandemic is that despite these challenges that our public has um, on their side, they are also capable of learning and eager to do so. Um, but we need to be able to lead them through the information. So things to keep in mind is orient people to your data. Um, explain your axes, your graphs, how to read them. An estimated 85% of the US population cannot find their home county on a map that looks like this one from the Georgia Department of Health, where we don't give cities, we don't give uh, landmarks like highways or anything like that. Um, it's hard for some people to find their own county. And so we need to be giving people more reference points. Um, and more importantly, we need to lead people through the data, walk them through it, show them what it means. And if you can't explain it simply, then you just don't understand it. Um, there's, that's an adage that's been attributed to like Albert Einstein or Richard Feynman, I'm not sure who, but um, the idea of learn it, do it, teach it has been a part of learning pedagogy for a long time. And so if you can teach it to somebody else, then that means that you know it. Keep your visualization simple. This is not an example of a simple graph. I almost didn't share it with my community because I was like, oh my goodness, they're gonna struggle. Um, but we walked through it. We got there. Um, and so just keep your visualization simple if you can. So every person that's in science or medicine has a role to play in this. Uh, you are all ambassadors of the scientific method. It, take your opportunities wherever you can to explain how you use the scientific method in your work and in your life, whether it's baking a cake or um, you know, building something in the garage, use those examples wherever you can. Build familiarity and trust. Um, share your trusted resources with your audience. I had somebody tell me the other day that an article in Newsweek held just as much weight as something in the New England Journal of Medicine. Those of us in science and medicine know that is not true. Um, so, but the public doesn't appreciate that and they don't understand that. So this is our chance to educate people. Be approachable and view questions as honest attempts at learning. Um, people genuinely want to learn, but don't take that as a slight against your ego or your expertise. Um, that being said, there are trolls out there who have no interest other than uh, occupying your time so th that you're not doing your critical work. So make sure to cut your losses if that happens. Um, but otherwise, take those questions as genuine interests in learning. Uh, be humble and honest. There are a lot of things we don't know in this pandemic. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough data. Um, and so if there are things that you don't know, don't flub your way through it. I think a lot of us learn that in our doctoral defenses or, or uh, exams, but, um, but just understand that that still applies to the public. It'll help to build trust if you can acknowledge when you don't know things. Uh, be consistent and data driven in your communications. Work to make people more data savvy consumers of information. Um, and so as long as you are letting the data lead your conversation, that is consistency. Um, 
I also use a lot of analogy and try to put science into real life context as much as I possibly can. And that seems to help me connect with my audience. And I think it will with, for you as well. Okay. So remember the non-scientists here, the lay people, the people that want to learn. Remember I said that we were going to talk to you too. This is your moment. You have an important role to play in this as well. Uh, we need uh, to all be better consumers of information. And part of that is on social media. When you are sharing information, make sure that you're reading the articles, make sure that they make sense and it's not clickbait, something that's just there to get somebody likes or clicks or, or you know, whatever there may be. Um, use data and evidence in your decision making as much as you possibly can and encourage people in your orbit to do so too. So whether that's your kids, your family, uh, your parents, which is a little bit harder these days, um, but, you know, use evidence to make your decisions. And if you don't understand data that's being presented by scientists, find a scientist, find a doctor, find somebody that has experience with this, ask them to try to go through the graphs or ch charts with you. Explain what the axes mean, what you're supposed to take away from this information. Um, and of course, be open to changing your mind if the data contradicts something that you previously believed. Um, that's just part of the beautiful stuff of science. We're always looking for the right answer um, through gaining more information and data. Be sure to examine your own sources of bias and how that can impact both your decision making as well as your perception of the world. And don't ever stop being a student. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Continue to be curious and learn as much as you can all the time. So if we can do the, these things as scientists and lay people, I think that we will improve not just our scientific literacy among our population, but also um, their ability to perform critical thinking. And I think that's going to have important ramifications, not just in COVID-19, but in the century to come. Um, and as dark as some of these days may seem and the challenges that we have ag against us are big right now, just understand that these moments of incredible challenge also inspire incredible moments of courage, bravery, and compassion. And so we will get to the other side of this pandemic. But we all have a role to play, whether that is sharing good information, wearing your mask, um, social distancing, and all those other really great things that we're trying to get you to do. So I would love to continue this conversation with people and I can be found on all of the social media networks. I also have a podcast and I'm probably most well known for my newsletter, which is available on Substack um, and you can find me there. Um, so that's it. Thank you so much everybody for inviting me. This is not my favorite mask, but it is my favorite team. So. <laughs> So go Atlanta United and um, spread kindness, not germs. Thank you so much for having me and be safe and be well.